What's up, everybody? This is Lord Sovereign from the Iron Lords podcast and lordsofgaming.net coming to you live from the show floor of PAX East 2022. It is our great honor and pleasure to be here with the devs of TMNT Shredder's Revenge and the guys at Tribute Games. So, we're talking to the writer here. Yeah, hi. Hi. Your name is? Uh, my name is Yannick Belzil. I am the writer slash narrative designer, whatever they call it in the industry, uh, on TMNT and on most tribute games, yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about, as an old school fan, when I saw this coming back, and I saw the work that you guys had done previously with Streets of Rage 4, I knew this was going to be a game that I was going to absolutely love. So tell me, what was the impetus for you guys to go out and get TMNT and bring it back to the forefront? Uh, well, uh, first, the, the thing is, Tribute Game is not uh, responsible for uh, Streets of Rage, uh, but uh, uh, .mu is with another developer. But that was what was really useful is that .mu had all this modern beat em up expertise, so they really helped us out how to make a modern uh, beat em up. Because a lot of people on our team worked on Scott Pilgrim, and they did uh, the 2007 TMNT movie adaptation on Game Boy Advance back in the day. So. Uh, Tribute Games is skilled into making beat em ups, but not more modern, recent beat em ups. So that's where I thought it would really help. As to why we uh, wanted to do the Turtles games, uh, at Tribute Games, pretty much every single game that, that we did were uh, original creations. But uh, we always said that if there's one, there are two things we can't say no to, and one of them is TMNT, the and the other would be Mega Man. So, um, for a couple of years, the company like circled around Nickelodeon, tried to get it happen, like, hey, and uh, they would pitch uh, other franchises to us. But we said no, we want to do the TMNT, uh, preferably '87 TMNT. Uh, but um, so, but it never really happened. But Dotemu was also circling them, and eventually, uh, the people from Dotemu uh, met with uh, our uh, leaders at Tribute Games and. Uh, met up and eventually they got together to sort of pitch themselves to uh, Nickelodeon and uh, we got uh, the extreme pleasure of making that game. So that's pretty much how it happened. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing because again, it was one of those things that's very serendipitous, just sort of everything happens in, in, in its perfect time. So tell me, because as I was watching and playing the game, it is one of those things where you look at the game and the nostalgia comes rushing back. It does look like a very old school, pixel art, beautiful game. How is it modernized? Because I was saying the same thing. It's obviously, when you look at the old games, it brings you back and it makes you think that it's an old game, but it's not. It has very modern sensibilities. Yeah. So tell me, in what way does it have modern sensibilities? Well, the main one is now the, uh, uh, it's in widescreen. Where instead of being 4-3, like, you know, uh, when it's 4-3, the turtles are taller, like, in the, art, in the arcade game, so the fact that it's widescreen, and also, like, all of the animators who worked on the previous game were brilliant, but they had a whole lot of limitations that we don't have. We have more colors, we can have animations with more frames, and so that allows for the turtles to have, uh, uh, to be more distinctive, and also have everyone have their own animations, and so, Art-wise, that's how we can uh, do also, because we don't have the limitations, like the backgrounds can be this, these lovingly, like almost pixel-painted, lush uh, environments instead of being tile sets. So that's how, and also, again, because we don't have the same limitations, we can also have like unique enemy spawns, like so the, the characters can just like pop up uh, from a desk or part of the background uh, as the foot soldier attack. So, we really have the technology to make, to, to add more to uh, classic uh, pixel art styles, which is something we do at Tribute Games, uh, is that we always use like uh, old school mechanics, but we have to, we, we keep adding fresh modern to this. Absolutely, that, that's exactly what I noticed. It's like, when you look at it, nostalgia when plays kind of tricks on your mind a little bit, right? Because you think, hey, I, it looked exactly like this. And the truth of the matter is that it, it doesn't. Um, so, if you can, explain to us a little bit about what's going on on the screen right now, what characters being played, and explain some of the like the technical stuff, the things that you were talking about that are display here. In addition to how you sort of came up with the story, but this is your narrative director, so how you came up with the story for this particular game, 
And if you took any inspiration, obviously from past Turtles games, mm -hmm. but like you said, you, you mentioned Scott Pilgrim and other types of games. What type of uh, literary sort of inspiration or, 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 or narrative-wise did you have? Uh, well, I'll tell you that the, the biggest um, inspiration is our Jackie Chan movies. There is a huge inspiration because, and there's a, a, a lineage with the turtle because Golden Harvest, but who used to produce all of the Jackie Chan movies in the 80s, they also produced the first Yemen movie. So that's why there's that cool martial arts stuff in it. But one of, my, uh, of our bigger ideas is that when you play the arcade game, a lot of the time the foot soldiers keep coming and coming, they just show up left to right from the screen or they pop from a door. So it was coming up with a lot of ideas so that the foot soldier would be part of the background and would show up in a comical way and uh, always have different uh, versions of them popping up because given that you're fighting them for the whole game, you're trying to renew their entrance each time so it's uh, so it, the, the game still feels fresh as you play through it. As for uh, ideas for the story, well, the, uh, the biggest inspiration is, of course, the original cartoon, uh, the 87 cartoon, but that's more have to do with the, uh, the comedic tone and uh, the, the, the tone of the universe. So the rest of it is, uh, because it's a beat-em-up, story-wise, you realize that you won't have the, the, the real estate for huge, huge scenes or a lot of dialogue. So uh, I wrote it like uh, a long chase scene or a long fight scene where uh, uh, bad guys are getting away with uh, uh, thingamajigs that build up to a doomsday plot and uh, the turtles are always running after them but then another big inspiration was uh, classic Simpsons the arcade game but also the show because back in the day when the Simpsons first started having all these funny details in the background was uh, uh, like it warped my brain to pay attention to what I was seeing. So we put a lot of these backgrounds, uh, a lot of stuff in the backgrounds for the game, uh, lots of Easter eggs or just funny stuff uh, for the game. But also, when you play the uh, the arcade game of The Simpsons, at the beginning of the level, something happens. There's animation. Someone has kidnapped Maggie or something. And what happens at the beginning of the level plays back into the appearance of the boss at the end or after the bus. So we always decided like oh, we'll have something happen at the beginning, at the end and through the level so it, it makes every level its own little episode. So that was our, our, our main idea to like uh, give more of that character flavor to uh, each and every level. That's fantastic. So every episode has come sort of its own arc and, yeah. and, 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 and into the overarching story. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one thing I noticed that it, the background it tells the story, right? It, and and the, the thing that you mentioned with the foot soldiers, absolutely apt because the foot soldiers are sort of like the minions of the game, where they're like the fodder. So you have to make them interesting in every single, in every single way, whether different colors or just the comedic tone, overtones that they have. So one of the big things in this, uh, in this original game is that we now have additional playable characters. Yes. We have Master Shredder, which I absolutely adore, and April, which looks super amazing. What, when did you guys in the, decide in the process we're going to add these extra characters? Was it right at the beginning or was it something that happened sort of organically as we were making the game? Uh, very early on. Uh, it's something that we wanted to do. It's something that, uh, you know, like Splinter doesn't... I mean, after the first couple of episodes of the Turtles barely fight anyways in the cartoon, but Splinter almost never fights. So we wanted to have Splinter as only a character who could fight, but we also wanted April O'Neil like, to be like... A, a, a kick-ass character in the game, and so when it was time to, to design you know, her moveset and her animations, like we got really excited because a lot of this of the character comes from all our wonderful animators who like made them. But at the same time, we would suggest things like one of my big ones was I want her to be to move like uh, Cynthia Rothrock in uh, Yes Madam. Yes, Madam. In Yes Madam with uh, Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. In fact. Uh, Cynthia Rothrock wears a yellow jumpsuit at one point in that movie. Uh, and I thought, this is how April should be. Like, I would post videos of her from different movies, and like, that's how April should be. Like, it's gonna be like really kick-ass. So, um, that's um, how... There's that element of, I guess, childhood wish. Of, like, what would Splinter fighting look like, but also what would the April fighting look like. And uh, it's also awesome because it sort of uh, left us 
a, a bit of liberty uh, of creating moves. Like, like, uh, the turtles' moves, some of them are homages to uh, different things, uh, some uh, from their moves from other games and stuff like that. So, but with the, uh, the, the newer characters, well, quote unquote newer characters, uh, we could get, sort of design their moves at the better. So that was really exciting. Yeah, as a fan, uh, I was super excited to see these characters in play and see how beautifully they animate, how beautifully they play. Um, and again, the move sets, because you, in your mind, you always imagine, hey, what kind of moves would these characters have? And to see them brought to life in this game with this amount of love and care is, is an absolute joy and pleasure to see. So thank you so much. Well, thank for you the for the done. Thanks for coming. Um, and I, I can't wait to see this game. So uh, again, introduce yourself once again to yes. the crowd and, um, and just let them know more about the game when it's going to come out. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm Nick Belzil, I'm the narrative uh, designer at Tribute Games. Uh, TMNT Shredder's Revenge is coming out summer 2022, so that's pretty close. Uh, for, for me, it's almost uh, right out the door because uh, we've been working on it for so long. Wishlist now on Steam! <laughs> Wishlist now on Steam! Uh, write to your congressman about it, uh, 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 talk, about, talk about it to your mayor, uh, your clergyman, whoever. Uh, we're looking forward. Um, I've been looking at this game, seeing it grow and adding animations for it and, and gameplay for it for two years. I'm super stoked to see uh, the fans enjoy it at last and playing it. Like I was watching you earlier, uh, looking uh, at your friends playing, and uh, I could see you smiling under your mask. I was like, oh, that, that's yeah. that's what we're working for. That's that, that's a uh, that's pretty good. That's why we we come to uh, to PAX for. So that's great. Absolutely. Hey. It is what we come to PAX for. This is where we get to see these small games come to life. And again, as someone, as a child of the 80s, these type of games are the ones that speak to my heart. And they are absolutely, you guys are doing such an amazing job. So once again, we're here with Tribute Games. This is Shredder's Revenge coming out later this summer. This is Lord Sovereign for LordsofGaming.net and the Iron Lord Podcast. See you soon.